Let's do it, Sachi. Sachi, Puki, Jushi, Metotam, Rira, Minshi, Nyende, Gempadi, Sange, Shingdu, Mite, Uwargi, Joku, Nanda, Shingla, Juparsho. Iram Guru Radha Mandala Kamiya Tayami Sange Chedam Soki Chognam La Janchu Bardu Dagmi Kapsuji Dagi Chenyen Gipe Sunam Ki Jola Penchir Sange Drupar Chedang Sogi Jognam La Changchu Bardu Dagmi Katsuchi Dagi Chunyang Gipe Sunam Ki Drola Benchi Sange Dupar Shog Sange Chedang Sogi Jognam La Changchu Bardu Dagmi Kapsuchi Daki Chenyang Gipe Sunam Ki Jola Pinchi Sange Drupar Shol. All right then. Uh, to go where we're going today, we have to review this verse. Nick, you want to review this verse? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is by Nagarjuna. Mm -hmm. The whole 60 mm -hmm. verses doesn't exist, but we have quotations of it in other texts, so we're inserting that much Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Want me to read it in Tibetan or yeah. English? Yeah. How about Tibetan? Gangdaki lo yumele. Nepa. Nepa. Ne means barley. Uh -huh. Ne means to stay. Tedaki ni kengidun. Sabmo mikme. Sabmo. Sabmo mikme. Nampar to. 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 Sabmo. Sabmo mikme. Nampar to. Yeah, again. Uh, anything to say? I mean, anyway. Well. Yeah. We so just uh, just remember this verse because it's it's a long explanation based on this verse. Yes. Okay, those whose minds have gone beyond the idea that things could exist or not, and who long no longer stay in that idea, they understand that the essence of mm, it's it almost like yeah they cause. understand that the meaning of cause yeah. is the profound truth that there's nothing to see. I like meaning better too. Okay, yeah. so now we're going there. And uh, we we're covering the one that you we turned into a verse that you realized was a verse. We finished that one, right? Yeah. Okay, so we yeah. we're moving on. That that one took a long time. Sorry about that. Lo chita no? What's that mean? Okay. Uh, just what just what kind of mind is it? Yeah. Even when they say lo in the verse, so you're gonna have to block that, right? Uh huh. And it's gonna have to be italicized here. Oh. Okay. Right. Needs bolts and italics here. That was my comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Low and then so when the verse talks about low, which is probably manas or mati, let's see what it is. Okay, uh, so the buddhi, buddhi, buddhi oh, wow. mind, uh, awareness. Okay. What what kind of mind you're talking about? Oh, it has number and day. It has uh, gone beyond. Where gone else do beyond. we see this verb day? Uh, nice, gone beyond grief, which is the Tibetan word for nirvana. So it also <laughs> means past tense. In, ver in the studying verbs, it means past tense, ndepa. Mm -hmm. uh, number depa, completely gone beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, Toma, uh, seeing. Things as. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, existence as being existent or non existent. Yeah, uh, and in plain English. In, pain, in plain English, the extreme of thinking that things exist yeah. is you come home, you're tired, your husband attacks you before you say anything, yeah. right? So to believe that he's coming this way 
in our in this year <coughs> school is which is prasangika is is yupa uh -huh. that's the extreme of believing he exists meaning from his own side and then mepa is only 1% frequency of yupa to believe that he doesn't exist is a philosophical position that you take somebody says he's only coming from your side and then you think oh well then everything's in my head there is no real husband it's just a figment of my mind that's another extreme so the first extreme everybody has even insects the second extreme extreme comes from thinking about a teaching the wrong way oh if he's coming from me then I'm I'm the most lonely person in the universe and I'm just interacting with people that are don't really exist okay those are two two extremes and we want to go down the middle okay. do you think it's okay to translate it as the extremes of existence and non existence sure i think so ta right ta mm -hmm. now there's a study of ta there's a whole section devoted to the study of ta wow and uh and if you're interested that discussion centers on is ta a state of mind or is ta the idea that that state of mind entertains no. is it the subject state of mind or is it the object state of mind or, or the object of that mind and they kind of decide it's a state of mind yeah. it's it's not it's not that your husband comes from his own side for example in utah it's believing that he comes from his own side oh. is the ta so you know, if you're interested, you can study it someday. Kind of okay. Leads to his text, right? Like the real yeah, mind. yeah. Anyway, what kind of mind is being described in this verse? It's a state of mind which is staying in the middle, yeah. and doesn't focus on either one of these two extremes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and by the way, there may there, there uh, doesn't exist. Yeah. Here's u with a different spelling. Okay, with this spelling, uh, it can mean center, uh -huh. uh, or here it means middle choice between the two. Right. Uh, that's why I don't like uh, one Buddhist scholar calls Madhyamika centrist philosophy or something centrist. like that, and uh, it's not the point of a center; it's a middle uh -huh. between two extremes. Uh -huh. But here he's used the word for middle center. Uh, other than these two? Yeah, there's no other choice. So these are pens and uh -huh. These are an all-exclusive contradiction. Uh -huh. There's no other choice. Uh -huh. okay? Either you exist or you don't exist. There's no other choice. There's nothing in between. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and they, they hold to that. Oh, sorry. They don't. Uh, they, they don't stay in the belief of things as being real. Yeah, and this belief, Shemba, is to be attached. Like, like you can be Shemba to your house or your wife or whatever, okay, uh -huh. in traditional Buddhism. But when you add Abhi uh -huh. to it, it's a philosophical attachment. You are seeing things that aren't there. Mentioned. Yeah, a belief, strong belief in. But it means a misinterpretation uh -huh. of an object, okay? So get used to Abhi Shen. Okay. Uh, uh, can I um, ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. You said catch the Su, uh. De Ni. So is this this as being? No, uh, no, you can't really catch it here. Oh, did I say that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't see things. As they have gone far beyond seeing things as existing in either extreme or something like that. Okay. Is the kind that goes beyond seeing things as existing? Or, uh, or not as existing? It literally, it says as being either one of these extremes. Uh -huh. So I don't know how you're going to catch it. Don't catch it so clumsily. Okay. Catch it more smoothly. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know what is long. Where is it? De oh. Dun uh, and an or. Neither do they stay in any strong uh. attraction to that. Uh, to that. You and Meta, okay? They don't stay, neither do they stay in any strong attachment to that. So this is to see it, and this is to believe in it, uh -huh. technically. That he's trying to explain why did Nagarjuna use two different words here. Uh -huh. uh, 
Got it. Okay. Cool. Tonga and Shimba. Uh -huh. uh, okay, Kanto Nakian. Uh, then it says they understand that they understand that the meaning of em emptiness is gem. Uh -huh, condition. uh, con conditions. Yeah. And then he says, uh, what is it that they realize? Kang Tong uh -huh. This is a question, rhetorical question. Starts with Kang. So we should, use, we should always yeah. translate it like that? Uh, right, it's not if here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it they see? What is it they understand? Uh -huh. They understand Ken. And then this is in a positive, a commentarial a positive. He's giving you uh, a synonym. Mm -hmm. uh, they understand conditions, mm -hmm. which is meaning. Uh, they understand the meaning of dependent origination. They understand the meaning of things occurring in cause and effect. They understand the meaning of things occurring in cause and effect. Yeah. So Tenching Doa. Yeah. If, if things occurring in dependence. They understand the meaning of things occurring in dependence. My so translation it's not dependence of. On causes and effect. It's no. Okay. Uh, it just says they occur in dependence. The meaning of things. Occur. Yeah. Of how things occur in dependence? Uh, yeah, you see now, mm, the den just means, he's tricky, it's very complicated. Yeah. Uh, what do they understand? They understand the in meaning uh -huh. of dependence. Uh -huh. That is what Nagarjuna here calls, with the single syllable, Ken. Oh, so they understand uh -huh. the meaning of dependence, cause and effect, comma, yeah. cause and effect, or something like that. Comma. Uh, factors, uh -huh. <laughs> comma <laughs> factors. Because that happens in, in one of yeah. the Arjuna's verses too. Yeah, what he's Earlier. saying, this whole Tenjin Dawa Jungwa Den, Tenjin Dawa Jungwa, is his com commentary on the syllable Ken. Because the verse only says Ken. Mm -hmm. Conditions. You know? And that's very uh, Nagarjunian. Uh -huh. For the whole word, things occur in dependence upon causes and factors. Factors. Mm -hmm. and, and you're supposed to understand that that's what he's talking about. On causes and factors. Yeah. And, and I think by adding the S, you'll be covered. Factors. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, that the world is coming from you mm -hmm. can be expressed in a single word. Factors. Okay. <laughs> With an S. Yeah. If it were me. Okay. Uh, now, the then is, is the trouble here. Mm. Uh, is it that they perceive the meaning of dependence? Or is it, down here, that they perceive uh, that the meaning of the, that, sorry, that emptiness is the meaning of dependence? You see? Th that's tricky. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just telling you, watch out in this section. Mm -hmm. uh, He's, he's, he's gonna say the point of dependence is emptiness. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, he's not just talking about understanding dependence. Uh -huh. Okay. He's trying to say, he's trying to overstate it. Yeah. Uh, what is, what is emptiness is dependent originally. Yeah. Okay. Which is a, a hyperbole. It's not technically true. One is an absence, one is a positive thing. All right. They on Chibanam. Now, this is cool because you have Tsongkhapa's regent. Uh -huh. His name is the regent, Geltsam. Uh -huh. You have Geltsam J uh, telling you what's the meaning of the word Mikme. Uh, which is the first line of Tsongkhapa's mantra, the first word of the first line of Tsongkhapa's mantra. Uh, what is it? It refers to a headstand. Near Alambana. Yeah, near Alambana. So what does unsupported mean? Mikme. Okay. Love with nothing, it sees. Okay. What does it mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here you have a, I mean, forever after in your life, when somebody asks you what's me me say we da jin jin me you can say, well, his own principal student said, this is the meaning of Mingme. Yeah, yeah. So here you have a technical 
discussion of the word mingling, and it's difficult, okay? And it's sexy, which is what I like. Okay. Chivanam uh, Tapa Chibichu. I said afraid. We don't say, you know, he was made, made afraid by the ghost in his house. Though. Oh, yeah. You know, we just say the ghost scared the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, make it a more... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my that? teacher in English class used to uh, take off every time we used the passive form. Uh -huh. uh, and it's much more just difficult to use a single active verb in English. Yeah. It's more difficult to find a single active verb. But my teacher harped on that. I had her for two years. She's brilliant. And she's, she was trained at University of Chicago. And she said, uh, use an active verb. Don't keep, don't keep saying was, was, was. They, they are scared. Become afraid? <laughs> yeah. Or they just are but scared. But you don't say that. You don't say he became afraid of the ghost in his house. You say, are scared. Yeah. Are afraid. Or the ghost scared him. You see? There's an active verb. Uh, you see? Uh, anyway, uh, it scares. Okay, understood, um, ver understood noun, understood subject. It chepa, chepa means it functions to scare, it scares. Right, right, because, but it would it's have to be something like, because this scares? Yeah, you gotta, the whole, se get the pieces and then you, you make a real sentence. Okay. okay. It scares chiba. Immature beings. I would uh, call it infants. Infants. It means infants. Yeah. It's, it's derogatory. Compared to an Arya, you are, you are a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. It means two-year-old. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it literally means, in English, the perfect translation is two-year-old. You know, the world is inhabited. The government of the United States is run by a two-year-old. Well, yeah. You see, uh, that gets that. scary. It's more specific. Yeah, <laughs> all the central bankers and the whole, uni the whole world. If they're not Arya, I don't know. But if, if they're not, then the world is run by dangerous two-year-olds. Okay, <laughs> who <laughs> don't know anything. They're playing with matches, you know. Uh, so you gotta have this. It's gotta feel more, more feel. Immature beings like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That means uh, your husband when he wants to do something. <laughs> okay, I chipping up. Tenam ki ting bot, and so he's giving two meanings of ming Yeah, yeah. Okay. A, it scares the poop out of. Infants. Two-year-olds. Baby. Two-year-old would be a perfect translation if we had the courage to use it. They nam ke ting bak minu bachir. Ting bak. They're incapable of fathoming such depth. That's perfect translation. Yeah. Okay, I so don't say I always criticize you. Yeah. Uh, They're always saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding does mean the depths, and bak means plumbing the depths. Okay. I was trying to be cool like you would by saying fathoming because pak is also a measure of depth and just like a fathom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a perfect translation. Minu. Yeah. They're incapable. Uh, therefore, and because of that, the depths. He must have used that in his root text, in his verse. Did he uh, use the, the word? profound, yeah. Yeah, so it this did. is blocked. I can smell it. Uh -huh. I can yeah, smell yeah. that he's weaving. Uh -huh. he's, he's, he's inserted a word here. Uh -huh. uh, and you can, after a long time of translating, you can feel it. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is unnatural. He, he must have inserted it. Yeah. Sammo, the depths, means langshigi uh, makyapa, ni. An understanding of that depth of that depth doesn't just arise uh, uh, by itself? Mm. Or uh. <laughs> Is it correct? Is the instrumental correct here? Uh, you should check the scan, okay? I'm just curious. Okay. It's probably correct, but anyway, rangshigi makepa niki means due to the fact that things don't go on their own. Due to the fact that things that don't don't go on their own. Oh. What you see what I mean? Oh, 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 oh. This one the here. Right? No, oh. this one I'm curious. Oh. Uh, kepa niki. Which would be yupa, you see. To exist on its own uh -huh. is to have grown 
by its very nature. Uh, so, Rangshiki Makepa is a synonym here for Sammo. It's an, a positive for Sammo. Uh -huh. The depth, uh -huh. meaning the fact that things don't grow through any nature of their own. Oh. Okay. Uh, and because of that, uh, Like the fact that things don't grow on them. Yeah, it's tricky. It's a, it's a, he's a, he's glossing some. Uh -huh. He's glossing <coughs> deep. You okay? You need some water? No. no. I have. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Makia Baniki. Yapada mepada usu u yosu tope lo. Anyway, let's go to Minupa. They can't. Uh -huh. uh, focus on objects in chin uh, hmm. chin is it is it unable to see that it's holding to a mistaken object yeah uh, they can't see that they are making a mistake uh -huh. right and there's three versions of that mistake they either think yipa things exist as they seem yeah or mepa, if they don't exist as they seem, then they can't exist. Oh. Or that there's some kind of pungsumba. Uh -huh. So you see, u means somewhere between those two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, somewhere between the two. S Created oh. by somebody or something. You know. But is, it, is that, that, that way between is a good thing, right? It's, that's the middle way. They can't perceive that that's mistaken. You see, they are incapable of perceiving that that is a mistaken idea. Chinji yo loki yo to make me Yeah. They I can't perceive that that's a mistaken idea. Therefore, they don't perceive. Is it that, <laughs> uh, is wrong. Is it yeah. that they don't perceive that u? Or is that u also part of like what's included? It's in the one mistake? of three things they can't see. Uh -huh. They can't see that the state of mind that he really believes that things exist or that they don't exist, or that there's some other possibility. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They can't perceive that that state of mind is mistaken. Therefore, we say they don't perceive. Uh -huh. But that's me. Yeah. yeah, they don't perceive, because they don't perceive that they're making a mistake in one of three variations. Things exist the way they seem, coming this way, or if they don't come this way, they don't, can't exist, or I just the world is some figment in my mind. Or that there's some other choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't see Even that they're making a mistake. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They're incapable of perceiving no. that what those three states of mind think are mistaken objects. They're incapable of perceiving that what those three states of mind think is a mistake. Is mistaken. Okay. Yeah. Why is it mistaken? Because in actuality, the fact that things are deep. Meaning the fact that they, the very fact, this knee, right? The very fact that they cannot grow by some nature of their own mm. means that sure. that state of mind has a mistaken, is mistaken towards its object. Okay? Mm. It's, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult. It is difficult. Okay. Uh, they are unable to plumb the depths. Yeah. Therefore, by the way, you know, Russian class, cut it into sentences. Cut it into simple sentences. When I can't understand a, a paragraph, I cut it into four-word chunks. And I just make stupid little sentences. Then later I tie them up. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Uh, there's something they can't, it's too deep for them. What? It's deep. What? Nothing can grow of its own accord. Okay? That fact, this knee makes it a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, that fact, ness, ta in Sanskrit, shunya ta, uh -huh. emptiness, the ness, okay? That fact that things are that way means that if you think things exist, or you think that they don't exist, or you think there's some third choice, then that idea is holding, is, is, is looking at a mistaken object. Okay, so the third choice. And when we say they don't look at that, they means they can't get it. They can't see that it's mistaken. Or you can say they're afraid to think about it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't. They don't look. Make me. Uh -huh. Like 
Nothing. Well, that's too much for me. You know, I can, even that sentence is too, you know, yeah. they're like this, <laughs> you know, they got this, they got this thing going on. So when we say Ming Mei, we mean either it repulses them, it's, they're, they're afraid to think about it. Yeah. You know, they are, don't, don't take me there. You don't, I don't want to think about the possibility that my husband is coming for me when he yells at me. It's, I don't, I just, I don't want to go there. The flow, either, they're called people who can't focus, uh -huh. either because they are afraid of looking at that, or, and then this whole second part of the sentence, okay, or that they fail to see that believing anything else is mistaken. Yeah. Since, key, uh, things exist uh, through emptiness, okay, mm -hmm. through emptiness, key. Uh-huh. Okay, meaning that they don't grow on their own. Your husband doesn't yell for nothing. Uh -huh. Something happened to create it. Uh -huh. Okay, got it? Yeah, and that's like profound. I'm just confused about that ooh there. It's not, it's not uh, referring to the middle way, right? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Different spelling, S. Yeah. It S means a, a third possibility between these two. Mean, which is still is incorrect. Yeah, meaning that's an incorrect view between the two. Weird, because yeah, it's other choices like the world was made by God. Oh. That would be between these two. Uh, so can uh, I translate it as something like or another or some other yeah, incorrect view yeah, or something? Yeah, like yeah, because he gave you that uh, back here. See, he defined it for you two two paragraphs ago. Oh, there's no uh, way third it. choice meaning something other than these yeah, two, yeah, yeah. which doesn't exist. Okay. I mean, emptiness is also a third choice, but it's not between the two. <laughs> but isn't it kind of between the two? It kind of is, but that's not what he's on. Obviously, it's not what he's talking about. Yeah, right, okay. He's talking about other lousy viewpoints between these two. Okay. Yeah. Like it's not true that some things are self-existent and some things don't. And it's interesting he went there because that means, I mean, if I were in the debate ground, I'd say, well, then that's not a pens and bunk out. You and me, you and me is not all the choices there are. Okay. Because Gelt of J says there's a third. Right. Okay. <coughs> yeah. You could go to... Right, right. You and May are not all inclusive right. neg opposites. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. There's lots like of changing problems. or unchanging covers right. everything in the universe. Right. But now you say, Gelsip, you say there's something in between. Right. But right. since it's talking about silly viewpoints in between, there could be anything. Because they all non exist. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, he said it right after saying that there's nothing in between. Yeah. A paragraph ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's so confusing. Yeah, that's hard. So this would make sense. And he, therefore, se, pace, ming me. Therefore, ming me. So, it's hu huge divisions in his description of ming me. One, I, it's too much for me to think about. Uh -huh. Looking away. It's, it freaks me out. Uh -huh. This talk means freaks me out. Uh -huh. Really. Literally, it means to be frightened or something. Uh -huh. But it yeah. means it just freaks them out. They don't want to think about it. Uh -huh. Or they misunderstand. Uh -huh. Okay, that's hard. He's hard. It's Gelsen really too hard. is hard. It's cool though. It's yeah. most cool things are hard. Okay, anyway. It's pretty confusing. Uh, yeah. So this is not the the of Jason. No, it's not. Sure. Yeah. It is. No. Sure, you could describe it as something that Shubas are afraid to look at, which by implication means that those who've seen emptiness are happy to look at it. <laughs> that's a couple oh. steps of it's a little bit of a jump there, but. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm troubled with this sentence. This morning I have a different idea of it. Oh. Um, I, I wanted... I, I'm going to take you back to the verse, okay? Way back here, okay? He said, uh, these guys who have law, these guys who have a mind? Yeah, meaning intelligence. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. These guys who have okay. intelligence uh -huh. see that the mean. I think I've been misstating it this morning. I, I want to clarify. They see that the meaning of dependence is emptiness. That's how you're going to translate right? A, B, C, S. The Dany Grammar case, right? Uh -huh. uh, we elected Nick as president. Nick, president as we elected. In Tibetan, syntax is that uh -huh. person who is something, the thing they are, as and we and the verb, uh, Nick, president, as we elected, 
is the syntax. Here, uh, I don't see it. dependent origination. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm mm, can't get done. Yeah, I'm sorry. Emptiness is the meaning of dependent origination. Okay. Uh, they see verb the subject of the sentence. These guys whose minds have gone beyond is and isn't. Uh -huh. Okay. These guys talk. They realize. They see, they see. Uh, that the meaning of dependence is emptiness, or you can say don't see anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. you got to get the syntax mm -hmm. right. Uh -huh. They see the that the meaning of dependent origination is emptiness. Or you could say they don't see anything. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a stupid question, but the, the, how does the ni work after an agentic uh -huh. particle? Like that, de da ki ni kin. Uh, ni is a filler to make his verse. Great. Uh -huh. You can so be sure uh, there was nothing in the Sanskrit. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> well, <because laughs> Let's go an look. There's an uh, and then yeah, there's nothing there. The best thing there's nothing there for me. <laughs> <laughs> he just needed a meter. He needed to make meter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It kind of repeats uh, the same thing as the sub. No, I, I wanted to say something important here. What, what was it? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little crunch our brains, hypertexting. God, what the hell is the need? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, there's two ways of reading the third and fourth line. Okay, and if you're guilt of J, you're very sensitive to it. Yeah. And I can barely grasp it. Yeah. But here we go. Uh, you can say they are perceiving the point of dependence, which is emptiness. And you're translating sabmo as being emptiness. Sub yeah, sabmo mingming. Sub sub yeah. Okay. Or, or, you can say that a Dani grammar case here, uh, they can, you, they see that emptiness is the meaning of dependence. Uh -huh. It's different. Uh, you can say, I perceive the emptiness of the cup. Or you can say, I perceive that the real cup is emptiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very different, very radical. Mm -hmm. Guess what Nagarjuna, you know? He's going to hyperbole, exaggeration, intended exaggeration, purposeful exaggeration. In English, we call hyperbole. He's going to purposely exaggerate. It's like Trump all over again. <laughs> you know, all Muslims are bad. You see, it's, it's all too much. It's, it's, it's ignorant, right? So this kind of, there's two choices of what he's saying here. Either he's saying uh, they perceive emptiness, uh, which is the meaning of, the meaning of dependent origination, yeah. or they perceive that emptiness is the meaning of dependent origination. That emptiness is where, where is the La Dum particle that you're It's saying not it here, it's understood. Okay. It's understood. Okay. Now, Gyaltsev J, in his commentary, gets to a point down here. Uh, where were we? Uh, yeah, yeah this, this line drives me crazy. Uh, or you can say, I think he's being very radical. Or you can say that they have grasped that the, the very meaning of dependence is emptiness. Empty, dependence means emptiness. Mm -hmm. You see? Yangna. So yeah. Yangna means alternate reading. Uh -huh. Or you can say, okay, or you can say, yeah. so you have to make it clear that it's, uh, mm -hmm. or you can say, uh -huh. uh, you can, jar means uh, add. Uh, jar means to add or to apply. Jartsi is glue. Okay. Uh, liquid jar is glue, is the word for glue. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jorlam is the path that, atta that takes you to Tulna. Right. Uh, yoga, it's yoga. Huge. Uh, okay, so, uh, or you can, or you could, Add, you know, or you could clarify. Uh, 
Yeah. You could, how do you say that? Uh, There's a word in English. Append. Uh, <laughs> For clarify. Uh, when you add something to clarify uh, something. A pen. Uh, it's like a pen. I think about it. Uh, you could say that they understand, that what they understand is that the very meaning of dependence is like that, meaning emptiness. Like okay. that, in this case, means we just have to, to be as being sammo. As, as being the sammo. Ni, right? Sammo ness. Ni, here. Ness. T I O N. The T A in Sanskrit became T I O N in English. Uh -huh. Exaggeration. Shunyata, mm -hmm. long A, uh, became T I O N, or N E S S in English, okay? Nas. Uh, so they either perceive emptiness of dependence, or they perceive that emptiness is, is what dependence means. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. two different things. But with the first one, emptiness. <laughs> they perceive emptiness <laughs> as, as nothing, and just they perceive emptiness, or they perceive that emptiness is the real meaning of dependence. Uh -huh. And and the Garjana and Gels of J are more likely to go for the second one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's contained in Daytar. Uh, yeah, Daytar yeah, means like, like that, that. Yeah. meaning empty of self-existence. Referring to the previous verse. Yeah, yeah. He might have said that. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's really tough. Is it different to see the emptiness of dependence? Is that different from seeing that emptiness is the meaning of dependence? For sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a different yeah. thing. It's a totally yeah. different thing. Is it different to see the emptiness of the cup or to say that the cup is the emptiness? Mm -hmm. Emptiness is the meaning of cup. That's the second one is hyperbole. It's too radical. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. And it's subtle. Mm -hmm. It's subtle. The cup is empty is one thing. Mm -hmm. Emptiness is the cup. Mm -hmm. Emptiness is cup. That's a different thing. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> got it? <laughs> so the second one he's suggesting that. Yeah. Yangna, he's giving you, Yangna means, I'll give you an alternate reading. Yeah. You could, you could augment, supplement, that's what I'm looking for, jar. You oh. could supplement the whole thing and say, emptiness is the meaning of dependence. Okay. Okay. But then is that, is that data yeah, yeah. is referring to the previous paragraph? Yeah, it is. But yeah, it's referring data. to a paragraph which actually talks about Sammo. the mistaken view. It is, but they, they don't see the sammo. Rangshigi mm -hmm. Okay. Nus. Brutal. So wow. Data refers me. to what was referred to as being not seen in the previous paragraph. Right. Yeah. By the chibas. Uh -huh. Brutal. That okay. is really Yeah, small. because we're talking about the people with low who do see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the chibas who don't see it. Yeah. Got They're it? just making a distinction. It's very deep. Paragraphs. Like, That's this would be a great class in Diamond Mountain in October. Where mm -hmm. we're, is it November or October? It's in October. Yeah, I'd like you to teach this in... And, and you could challenge people. Is there a difference between the emptiness of dependence and saying that emptiness is dependence, or dependence is emptiness? Emptiness is, the, is what dependence really is. Yeah. It's too much. But yeah. it, yeah, but it's c sexy. Okay. Uh, We're over the time, by the way. <coughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, I'll just start it. Let's do a little bit more. Okay. Dylan. What do I have to do next? Another yeah. translation class. Okay, Stanley doesn't mind. Dela and Dera Park Bay Now. Oh, it's going to get made up. Now we go into a huge, nasty, difficult debate. Oh, Hopefully, the sure. rest of the book will be easier. Dela and Dera. So, Dela and Dera is a subtle way to change the subject. Uh -huh. I think I told you guys before. Dela and Dera means, uh, well, now. <laughs> okay, Dela and Dera. About that, here. Okay, about that here. It's like changing the subject. Your husband wants to go to the movies, you want to go to a restaurant. <laughs> You're like, you know, on that subject, do you want to go to Hudson's or, <laughs> or Cucina? <laughs> you know, it's just a, it's a soft change of subject okay. idiom. Delandir. Delandir. Well, since we're on that subject, uh -huh. and by the way, he's going to go into a long thing that's not in the garden at all. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, while well, well, we're on that, uh -huh. while we're on that, let's, uh, let's examine the question. Chepercha. Chepercha. 
Check our job, uh, yeah, yeah. With a D and not an S. Uh -huh. Let's examine the question of whether, as an Arya sees emptiness directly, uh -huh. they even have any mind or not. While we're on the subject of law, wow. well, while we're on the subject of this state of mind yeah, yeah. that wise people see, that either the, the, either the emptiness of dependence or that, the, or that dependence is emptiness, Mm -hmm. While we're on the subject of their special state of mind, right, right. let's talk about below, B-L-O, law. Uh -huh. Let's talk about it with regard to it a person in the direct possession of Arya. Oh, no. uh, emptiness. Do they even have a mind at that moment? <laughs> so okay. Awesome. Do they have an, even have a mind at that moment? That's great. Because it was a big subject of controversy in the 8th century. You know, it was a huge subject of controversy. Does their mind just discontinue for a while, uh -huh. uh, which is called Dushe Mepe Nyomju, you know. The state of meditation with no awareness. Yeah, meditation with no awareness, uh -huh. yeah. with no discrimination. no discrimination. Do they enter some kind of limbo? Uh -huh. Do they enter some kind of limbo? Because many people thought that's what em seeing emptiness was. Right. And it's not an easy question. It's not an easy question. So lo, lo you may whether or not whether or not it exists. When you no, when you yeah. contrapose you and may, uh -huh. it means whether or not. Okay. Okay. So it's nothing to do with the extremes of existence and non-existence. No, no. Here it's a different thing. Yeah, it's a good yeah, yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. So different was, subject and completely. It was, and it was, it was and in the last paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna champa. We're gonna examine the question. He says, you know, while we're on that, so I would, I would segue with that, while we're on that, you know, let's examine the question of whether or not during an Arya's, generally Nyamshak means Samapati, uh -huh. uh, equipoise is a good translation, uh -huh. meditative equipoise, it's, it's technically, it sounds technical, but it's a good translation. Okay. What's the equipoise normally between? Yeah, yeah, agitation and uh, sleepiness. Mm -hmm. Sleepiness Chimua. and thinking about lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Samapati, to, to, to balance. I call it balanced meditation, personally. Yeah, balance. I like uh, that. It's balanced yeah. between these two extremes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yeah. So, but, but when you use the word with regard to an Arya, it always means the direct perception of emptiness. Mm -hmm. Okay. It changes. Okay. Uh, so it's a change of flavor. When you say Papa in front of it, it yeah. no longer means... The emphasis is no longer that he's not distracted or not sleepy. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. emphasis is he's direct mm -hmm. perception. Mm -hmm. So when you say Pakwi Nyamshak, it's not the same as Nyamshak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, got Pakwi it? Pakwi Nyamshak means the state of meditation of an aria. Of mine. Well, they have meditation which is not direct perception yeah. emptiness because when they come out of direct perception emptiness, they're still sitting there and meditating and they're still, when they have bodhisattva experience, that's a medita in meditation, but it's not Papa and Yamsha. Uh -huh. okay. It's the Yamsha of a Papa, but it's not Papa and Yamsha. During the direct <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's what I want you to grasp. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay, here they're talking direct perception and emptiness. When they say Papa and Yamsha, uh -huh. the deep meditation of an Arya, it doesn't mean that that deep meditation, right? It means specifically their direct perception and emptiness. <coughs> okay. Kandat lo ke lang ne te an nawara chepa o shemawa. I should have left these two together. Okay. But, uh, okay, those guys, they don't. Uh, I'm going to even paste it back up there. I was trying to make it easier for you. Kandat lo ke lang ne te an Yeah. Uh, those guys, go back from te Okay. Those guys who mawa, who say, yeah, those guys who say, quote, uh, if you accept anyone, kangda, uh -huh, uh -huh. anyone who accepts lo uh, yu, yeah. that, that it does exist, yeah, then you then you'd have to say that it has a nangwa, has an appearance. Yeah. Now here, nangwa is opposed to Absence. Uh, it has a presence. <laughs> like a positive presence. Yeah, it has an existence. But it exists at all. Okay, so this, the word nangwa is very loaded. Slippery. It means, uh, no, it means all states of mind must have an object. Oh. That we accept. That we accept. The, so do you, so I'm Shenluk Yurongluk. Okay. 
Do you, do you believe that uh, Arya in the direct perception of emptiness has a state of mind? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't believe it just this goes into limbo. That yeah. is, we don't believe the mind is suspended during the direct perception of emptiness. Right. Well then, the mind must have a positive object. Right. Oh, but that's <laughs> that's yeah, the right. implication of Nawa. It has to be a positive object. Yeah, Nawa implies here a, a positive object. But it, because it's also Shen Luke, and he's about to say those guys are idiots who say oh. that. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if he has, if his mind is operating at that moment, then it must have a a, a bright. Nawa means it must have something appearing to it, which is positive. Oh, so Nawa is a, an here a positive the object appearing. The implication here is that. That's the. Okay. Yeah. Now you have to struggle. Literally, Nawa means. <laughs> You see, it's almost the opposite of an absence. Uh, uh -huh, yeah. You see, something but you. Must be arising so it's a you. Something must, something <coughs> bright and shiny must be in front something of it. Must yeah. Be to it. Okay. Yeah. Because it's low. Yeah. It's mine. It's a yule. Uh huh. Yule is the definition a, of mind is the thing that. Yeah, yule jen. Yeah, yule jen. Yeah, that which has an object right. is a def is one of the definitions of mind. Yeah. So so does it have some bright shiny thing in front of it? That's what it means here. Yeah. Implying right. a positive thing and not a missing thing. Right, uh -huh. as opposed to what okay. you see when you fail yeah. to find something. Some bright, shiny thing in front of it. That's what Nama means here, okay? Uh -huh. Those who claim that, they dog, ume choki chitsam yang minawa, a single whiff, uh -huh. chi means whiff, chi. Oh, yeah, right. of, the, of majimika. Uh -huh. It's not Nama to them, man. Yeah, yeah. He uses the same verb. He, he uses the same it's word. Not appearing to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Got uh -huh. it? Even they're not yeah, even yeah. the scent of the path, even a whiff of the path in the middle way is not mm -hmm. appearing to them. Good. That's yeah, yeah. And he's doing a pun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, don't have a, they don't have a bright, shiny whiff of my new <laughs> <laughs> Okay, got it? Now, how you translate that, you can spend a couple of days, you I know. probably will. And, but it's got to come out sexy, you know. Yeah. If you think that an Arya during the direct perception of emptiness, that if they have a state of mind, then they must have a Nangwa. You don't have a Nangwa of a sniff of the middle way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, he's really cool. Sun Yung means to tear out. Sun That's that rape, like that rape word. Yeah, uh -huh. this is, Sun Jimba is the uh, present tense. Uh -huh. Future tense of that Jimba is Yung. Sun Yung. Sun Yung uh, again, you get this switch between N and NG. Okay. You see what I mean? Okay. Uh, like Len and Long. Mm -hmm. We talked about it. Well, well, Sometimes you get it. Yeah, so future tense. Mm -hmm. Sung, Sung Jimba mm -hmm. means to rip out from the roots. Uh -huh. right? uh -huh. Sung Yungwa means to be ripped out from the roots. Okay. Nay, uh, a position uh, to be ripped out from oh, the roots. Sam Diang Mirun. It's not even worthy to be called a position that I should waste my time destroying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bepa me means that I should make effort to destroy it. It's not worth it. You know, tell me that... Bring it up. <laughs> 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 no, he's, no he, he's implying he's not going to say more about it. Yeah, yeah. Those who say, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. those who insist, yeah, if they have it, that he has a state of mind, Meaning right. a state of mind that has a shiny, an bright, shiny right. object. If, if by state of mind you mean a state of mind yeah. that has a shiny yeah. object. Yeah. But he doesn't say that, right? He mm. just calls it a state of mind. No, he says, yeah. uh, Nangwa Dan uh -huh. oh, which yeah. has a bright, shiny object. Yeah, yeah. I'm not wasting my time on you guys. Right. Okay. I'm more interested in Gyana Kembo. Uh, the great Chinese guy. Who said, no mind. Uh -huh. yeah, he's more interested in destroying that. Guy. Yeah, and that's uh, <laughs> the unnamed uh, monk uh, during Kamaloshima's time. Uh -huh. And he believed Chiang Mit. Chiang Mit. That there's no, no mind, mind at all. At all Nothing right. at all. Everything disappears. And Gelt of J is more interested in. Yeah, I'm more interested in the maybe choke, which is the next <laughs> book down here, see? Uh -huh. maybe Let's choke. talk about that guy. Uh -huh. That's more interesting for me. Yeah. yeah. You know? To insult you, you, but guys who, you, you guys who have <laughs> trouble, you guys who say. <laughs> He's got to have a bright, shiny object in front of his mind. I'm not, you're not worth my time. Yeah. Let's go to this other guy. He's worth, he's worth he's my time. He's more interesting. Yeah, he's more interesting. This guy who says no state of mind.
during the direct perception of emptiness. Now that's more interesting. Mm -hmm. okay. And he spends a long time on that guy. Well, I'm looking forward to okay. it. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should... Uh, yeah, we should go on. Cliffhanger. But it's hard. I mean, I sit there in the coffee shop with Mr. Ben, and without drinking his coffee, I would never get this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I just look at it for 10 minutes, and then he says, have a sip of coffee. He goes, no. I drink his coffee, and I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. So you've seen his kit. V <laughs> likes the grinder, by the way. So she glad. says thank you. Sashi Puki Jushing Metotram Riram Lingshin Yende Gampani Sangye Shing Du Mikte Uwangi Jokun Nam Dak Shing La Chupar Shor Inam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami Kewa Ding Kewa Kun Sanam Yeshe Tso Tso Shing Sanam Yeshe Le Chung Wei Tabar Kun Yi Tobar Awesome. Wow. I, I really want to hang on the Jung, okay? You should Jung. appreciate the Jung. Okay. Yeah. So it's possible, between the future and present tense of a verb, that the suffix letter changes. Right. Between N and NG. Uh -huh. But the vowel also changes. The vowel and the suffix. Yeah, letter. it was an I. It was a Giku. So for and it changed to a Shabku. So it goes from Jin. Apostrophe B Y I N. Apostrophe B Y I N. It goes from Jin to Yun. Yeah, Yun. Yung. And okay. Len goes to Lung. Uh huh, right. And so the, long, and the goes imperative goes to Lung. So oh. you can have three different oh, vowels in the same verb. Wow. And you got to know that. And this yeah. is the passive to be ripped out. P future tense. Future passive? Which is Did to be. Say? Oh, to be, will be. To be ripped out. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Is yet yeah. to be ripped out. Uh, it helps if there's no S on it. Will be? If you're trying to decide if it's future or, pre or past, if there's no S on it, you can kind of swing towards the future tense. Okay. Okay. And then as opposed to Jin, which would be two rip out. Yeah. This is not this is not even appropriate uh, point to be ripped up. To to be future tense. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something I'm gonna waste my time yeah. on. Uh -huh. Therefore I'm not gonna even try. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Is half pepa, half tundu. Virya. I'm not going to use my effort. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sweat. Yeah. I'm not going to waste my sweat. I'm not going to exert myself. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is a waste of time. Uh. We'll say something like this would be a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. Now, I, but the maybe chunk, now that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's a cliffhanger. Okay. Oh, Yay. Mess with it.